Hello and welcome to episode 3 of my Kerbal Space Program NASA series. Um, there's been kind of a delay, been doing some hardware upgrades on the PC. I added a 1 terabyte hard drive just for recording. Um, I consider it probably wasn't healthy to keep uh, reading and writing multiple hundreds of gigs to my RAID 0. Um, I've just ended up accidentally wiping my RAID so many times I've just become paranoid on it. So, just a little bit of extra insurance. And this is going to be one of the more technical uh, videos I'll be doing. Not so much because there's going to be a whole lot in the way of explanation, but just because there's a lot of testing to be done to get our uh, space program in the shape we are wanting. We have Chuck Kerman taking to the skies in the X-15 to perform a test on the LV-1R radial engines. Once all uh, parameters are met, point the no nose near the horizon, not necessarily at it, and then let her rip. And a lot of people, there's been a lot of complaints from the forums about these testing um, contracts, and I can kind of see them getting tedious. They're, the main complaint that I'm seeing that really I feel I can address is people saying that the windows for these are not wide enough. And as you can see, one of the reasons why I developed the X-15, in addition to just flavor or funness, is a jet or a rocket plane can spend more time at a given altitude or speed to more easily acquire test parameters. Just quick unlock there. And testing continues with a uh, purpose-built single-stage test rocket, which this is kind of be, would be kind of analogous to like the sounding rockets that are launched up in Norway for uh, Aurora Borealis research and such, and other other types of uh, small rockets have been used for testing in the past. Which is kind of pretty much what I'm doing here is just individual component testing. But I can kind of see um, the argument against these, and somebody named Steampunked on the forums made a really good suggestion um, on a thread that was started just about this specifically, is that it would be kind of nice to start getting contracts that are less test this part in this location under these certain, certain circumstances, more along the lines of deploy this rover on Duna at these coordinates and make sure that um, it's processed correctly at a normal facility. Which I responded to that because I really thought that was a great idea, but it'd be kind of nice to kind of keep these technical hardware tests in the beginning just to kind of give you the sense that you're kind of getting your legs underneath you and figuring out the space program as it goes along before you graduate to the more space flight oriented ones because I can see this getting to be a pretty tedious drag later on. Um, I won't have to be doing this so much for the science value later on as just they're really the only source of income. Excuse me. And Personally, my dream setup for uh, contracts and finance and Kerbal Space Program, I think I've mentioned this before, would be kind of an annual or monthly payout based on your prestige level and things you've accomplished. But perhaps some lucky, well not lucky, but some compassionate modder will take that to heart. This was kind of an interesting test, um, and I got to practice my space my space maneuvering to pull off some neat stuff. I have to test the LV-1 Ant engine, um, or as my wife calls it, the Zoolander, on an escape trajectory from Kerbin. And it's a really tiny engine, and there's not a whole lot of Delta V in this rocket, and so I decided to see if I could throw it out of the system with a lunar gravity assist. And so that's what I'm doing now. Um, these really awesome looking Parts are from the Universal Storage Pack, which help will allow you to build uh, service modules. 
and this latest version have the I'm sorry, Mystery Goo and the Science Junior added. I'm sorry, still indigestion. Well, I think these are some pretty groovy looking parts and really help if you want to keep kind of a realistic aesthetic. The one of the stated goals of the Universal Storage mod, and they will say this repeatedly on the forums, is they believe strongly in video games as educational tools. So they've they're really trying to keep this science and factually based, which is pretty awesome for me. Um, and this little science bay right here is pretty cool because you can hide your batteries now. You can you can shove whatever device you would like to in there, but I typically use them for batteries or uh, hiding radial parachutes. And my first Mooner encounter, it kicked me into a higher orbit, but didn't quite give me the Delta V to escape. So I'm coming by for a second pass, and I'm just going to go full kamikaze. And you can see how close I was to pretty much burning everything out. But we've got our escape trajectory set up. As it swings closer to the moon, it'll accelerate and then get pitched off into the great nothingness. Initiated our engine test. But yeah, I have been absolutely loving the Universal, Universal Storage mod, um, especially version, uh, I want to say 5 is the most recent one. Uh, don't quote me, it's been a while since I've looked at it. But this is the end of the Mercury program, or the MOHO program, as it would be called. Jebediah Kerman making sure his buddy is securely fastened into his seat. And this is the FASA launch tower. If you're going to use it and tack life support, make sure you recover it before the if you have any Kerbals inside um, run out of resources. I've had other saves where I had to figure that out. Um, I took the lesson to heart, so don't fear for Jeb, he's fine. But I had to do some tests on the way up, and I thought I'd uh, make the most of it by just lobbing on some of the stuff. The original plan was to pump fuel out of those uh, radial tanks into the central tank, but that didn't... Because I'm flying a rocket, I'm spending so little time inside that flight envelope for the test, I just pretty much had to ditch them at the first opportunity. And if you notice things are exploding like crazy as I eject them, um, I still have the decoupler for X64 bit um, plug-in installed. Six, uh, 0.41, or hang on. Version 0.24.2, the latest release of Kerbal Space Program, has, I believe, fixed the decoupler bug. And what I think my add-on mod is doing is it's not so much correcting as it's just adding extra force to it. Um, I tried doing some of those uh, decoupler tests on an aircraft. Instead, when I deployed it, um, it pretty much blew the aircraft in half, and I had to make with the ejecting and use my escape parachutes. But this is what I was talking about building uh, service modules. They now have liquid fuel and oxidizer packs and modifier tanks. So you can pretty much make a self-contained unit out of these that looks just absolutely glorious. I love that material bay. And one of the one of my favorite additions of these uh, Science Junior and Mystery Goo is, watch this. You notice there was not the annoying nanny reminder saying that the device will be rendered inoperable. You can just simply collect data. And I was afraid that that had meant they had glitched out um, when they, or had had an oversight when they created these in that you could just in infinitely spam these experiments over and over again. That is not the case. They just removed the warning when you have a Kerbal collect it. They make the assumption that if you're right clicking the unit with a Kerbal in close proximity and trying to remove data that you meant what you clicked and you clicked what you meant. And so they don't second guess you. Which gets kind of annoying if you're trying to maneuver a Kerbal 
delicately around this hardware. It's a nice, sleek looking machine there. I love how the color, the stripes match up to the Mark 1 pod. And I do have a decoupler, um, but that's a lot of expensive hardware, and even though I got the science out of it, um, I want to recover as much of it as I can. Not necessarily trying to, again, min-max this thing, but no point in throwing off perfectly good parts if you don't need to. The extra mass does mean that uh, you carry a lot of velocity on re-entry. So I was able to plan my periaps just almost perfectly enough to bring this down just a couple miles east of the Space Center. Or kilometers. But that extra mass means it holds the velocity and that heat shield's taking a much more aggressive beating than it typically does. But with universal storage, what you're looking at is essentially it's the same module I've been sending up for the Mercury program with the two radial parachutes, the Science Junior, the Mystery Goo Pods. It's just much sleeker, self-contained. Um, it costs a heck of a lot more, but uh, if you're recovering, that's not necessarily such a bad deal. And I can kind of uh, more realistically hide these parachutes. Which, yes, I am particularly proud of that. I just like the way that looked and worked out. Safe returns all around. Rather bouncy. And Jack Herman being awarded a Mach 5 ribbon, which it seems like uh, Final Frontier has corrected the Mach 10 ribbon you get just for hitting the water, which is always nice. I need to strip that decoration from a couple of my curls. With that, Mercury mission over, or Moho mission. Let me start peeking around. Get to unlock a couple more modules. And because I moved the basic landing gear out of landing, I still need to unlock it for my Apollo program. Um, the main reason to unlock landing at this point in the uh, the program is pretty much over with. But the Kerbals rejoice with the acquisition of the KF-86 science jet, which is basically my clone of a F-86 or MiG-15 type aircraft. And I've put various uh, science instruments in the nose there. You can see the universal storage pod. But this is going to be the workhorse, or at least aircraft like it will be the workhorse for a lot of my uh, atmospheric testing. It's not the fastest thing with that basic jet, so some of the velocities it can't hit, and so I'll probably still be running the X-15 for a while. I don't think I'm going to get uh, supersonic flight for some time now, because now that I'm into, I'm out of MOHO and into kind of the Gemini-ish program, um, I really need to focus on building more capable rockets. Speed break point. I was really happy with the way those navigation lights came out. Careful manual placement for each one. But I rationalized that as performing a uh, spin recovery parachute test at a given speed to make sure the unit wouldn't fail. Continuing with some more testing rockets. This being the Skipper. Which, on this launch, the Skipper was an experimental part. Uh, I don't 
I haven't unlocked uh, heavy rocketry yet. Fire up those four radio engines. That's a nice little bird flying with you. Make sure we're in the range for more tests. And because I figured keeping those uh, fairings attached while deploying parachutes through them was kind of a bridge too far, uh, I decided uh, to redesign these things so that I can pop the fairings off, which is what it would look... This would, this would be more what you would find in real life for a uh, testing rocket. You would have a disposable fairing that would blow off the parachute. Unfortunately, the uh, speed was a little too high for that skipper. But the majority of the rocket was returned intact. Some more radial engine testing. And I'm trying to show as much of this... Uh, these contract test flights as I can in this video just so people get a sense of how I'm doing it I'm not gonna show I'm probably not gonna show much if at any of it all at all in these videos it's tedious um, it's really not all that interesting to watch to me it's fun to pull off because I can come up with all these goofy little rationalizations for what I'm doing and assembling these things is a lot like putting together a puzzle um, or trying to solve a puzzle for me, which is fun. Um, trying to set up which part deploys when for testing at various uh, flight parameters. And it just kind of lets me practice some flying skills by trying to control my speed and everything. Your mileage will most definitely vary. And unfortunately, this thing when I crashed fell over, it destroyed the engine I was supposed to test while splashed down. I was a little too slow on my staging. But with that done, we can unlock fueling systems. And we'll go for heavy rocketry too. Clearing out the 90 science tier. With the change of focus from just basic space flight to a potential moon mission um, before the deployment of the Gemini analog, we have launched a mission to map the moon. I cut out all the uh, launch and staging and transfer stuff because it's mind-bogglingly tedious. I had enough Delta V in my just Kerbin map sat that I was able to, through some creative uses of uh, gravity assists um, and gravity capture, put this thing into a stable polar orbit so I could get the moon mapped. I don't have my biome data yet, but... And I mean, again, I've been trying to avoid these rescue missions, but the, ga the game is absolutely uh, bound and determined to make me do these. Um, because I previously had Chuck Kerman, which I believe is the equivalent answer to a certain Chuck Yeager. And when I went and checked the contract screen, they had a mission for rescuing Buzz Kerman from orbit. And having a Kerbal named Buzz on my crew roster was just too enticing to pass up. And it's not cruel to leave them up there because one, one mission I... Uh, skipped and the Kerbal I was sent to rescue later turned up in my applicant pool so I'm just going to assume someone else is going up and getting them and I am not actually some sort of monster for leaving them there. But that's been episode three. Um, next episode we're going to get into Gemini flights and it'll be a lot more uh, fun and interesting. Thank you for watching.